for our Facebook Live. So hang out for a moment before we get started. Howdy folks, how are y'all doing today? Uh, welcome to our Facebook Live here at the Fort Worth Zoo. My name is Kelly and I am joined this afternoon by Autumn, one of our awesome animal trainers in the outreach department, and the cute little girl you're all here to see, Thistle. She is one of our animal ambassadors and she is a Cape porcupine. Now we've got some cool stuff going on this afternoon, so Thistle's getting us started. And if you follow the Facebook, um, our Fort Worth Zoo Facebook, maybe you've seen her before. She did a little video here recently where she was being trained by another one of our animal trainers on our stage where we do our stage shows. So you may be acquainted with her, but if you missed that video or maybe you just want a reintroduction, I'll talk a little bit about her. Thistle is a Cape porcupine, which is a species that is found in Africa. They live in kind of open savanna areas and you can tell right away that she's a porcupine because she is covered in those quills. They're very impressive. Some of her quills are over two feet long. And the first thing we like to tell people about porcupines is that they cannot shoot their quills. That's a really common misconception about them. It's something that most people have heard before or seen in cartoons, but it is a myth. Uh, their quills grow just like our hair does. And just like we can't shoot our hair out, they cannot shoot their quills. Uh, but they do have a muscle at the base of each one so they can raise and lower them and that is the key to their defense because if you think about it a porcupine using their quills it means they have to come in contact with the animal that they're aggressing against so before they have to do that they want to try to de-escalate the situation by scaring a predator off and looking intimidating so if thistle here was feeling uh, particularly threatened and she wanted someone to back off she would raise those quills up really high and start stomping her teeth uh, or stomping her feet and rattling her teeth and rattling her tail and uh, hopefully that threat display would get that animal to leave her alone. Now uh, some of those quills like I said are very very long but those long quills are not the ones you would have to worry about. The quills that she uses primarily for defense are kind of found at the base of her tail. They're much shorter and thicker and very very rigid so they're as sharp as a needle and will go in just like a needle and uh, inflict damage that way. But they're also covered in bacteria, so that's another secondary defense. If an animal is unlucky enough to get poked by a porcupine quill, they could develop a nasty infection. And so animals learn pretty quickly not to mess with porcupines. They don't have too many predators or they're not predated on too often. If an animal was going to try to hunt a porcupine like thistle here, it might be something like a lion in the African savannas. But yeah, like I said, that lion would have to be pretty desperate to try to take on those impressive quills. Uh, Kara, or, uh, thistle here is showing off some of her training skills. Autumn is walking around the room with her, asking her for various behaviors. One thing she knows is a turn, so she's showing it off right now. Good job. And you can tell just how confident Autumn is being close to Thistle. She's not worried about those quills because they've developed that relationship um, through training together and working together and bonding. Uh, she can even have Thistle go through her legs because Thistle is in complete control of when she would need to use those quills. Um, another thing she knows how to do is target, which is what she's doing now. A target is when an animal is trained to touch a particular body part to an object. So the object in this case is that little buoy that Autumn has in her hand and Thistle is trained to target her nose to it. So she'll boop it with her nose and then she gets a treat. So Thistle's favorite treats are sweet potato, banana, grapes, and all-time, all-time favorite, Fruity Cheerios. I mean, I love them too, so of course she's gonna like them. In the wild, they don't get Fruity Cheerios. They're gonna eat mostly plant material. They are herbivores. So they like to eat grasses, leaves, roots, shoots, uh, tubers, things like that. And occasionally they can live near human populations and so they can go after cultivated crops as well. So occasionally there is um, some human conflict where they maybe go and harass some farmers crops, but they're out there just trying to make a living and any kind of fruits and vegetables they find are uh, free game. 
So she's going to use her really large front teeth in order to eat those items. And uh, rodents are known for having really big incisor teeth. As a porcupine, she is a member of the rodent family. And so her front two teeth are really big and they're orange. <laughs> and that does not mean that her teeth are dirty or unhealthy. Having yellow or orange teeth is normal for a porcupine. And that's because their teeth have an extra property in them, magnesium and iron, which help them be super, super strong so they can be munching and chewing on things all day long. Because if you think about animals like beavers, they're chewing down trees. They need to have super strong teeth. And she's gonna be ripping up um, branches and roots, so she's gotta have strong teeth to do that as well. All right, thank you so much, Thistle. So uh, you could see her showing off those quills as she was moving around, but we also have some quills for you to see here. Now, like I said, their quills are similar to hair. And so sometimes this will in the morning, she wakes up and some of her quills have fallen out. Just like when you wake up in the morning, some of your hair has fallen out and is on your pillow. This will same situation. So when that happens, we collect them and we use them to show to guests. So like I was saying, these long ones are the ones that are not going to be super good for poking anything with because they're really, really flexible. They bend and they're kind of sharp, but they're not going to do any damage. Uh, these shorter ones that are found closer to the base of her tail, these are the ones you'd need to worry about. They're much more rigid. I can't bend them at all. And you can see that point on them. They're incredibly sharp. You can see the root end of them right here. This is where it would stick into her skin. And like I was saying, when they're threatening, they're going to rattle their quills back and forth. And they think that's where the throwing the quills myth came from because when a porcupine rattles their quills, sometimes quills will kind of fall out and it's loosening up those quills. So if they have to use them for defense, they'll come out easily in that predator's body, but they aren't actually throwing them. Now, we have another little porcupine friend joining us. So I'm gonna get set up for her. And we're gonna do a little bit of a compare and contrast. So Thistle, the first porcupine we met, she was from Africa. Our next porcupine friend, Carolina, she is from South America. And you can see right away, they're both porcupines. They both have those quills. They're both rodents, but they're very different animals. Um, and that is because they live, they live different lifestyles. Thistle is gonna hang out on the ground in Africa, moving in those open savannas, digging in the dirt. Whereas Carolina here is an arboreal species of porcupine. Now arboreal simply means that she lives up in the trees and she is much smaller and that's gonna help her climb in between tree branches, moving high up in the tree canopy and the rainforests of South America. And as a prehensile tailed porcupine, she gets her name from this long tail that you see coming down from her body. And she uses that as a climbing tool. So prehensile is a word that means it, an, an limb or a body part is capable of grasping or holding. So an elephant's trunk is prehensile. They use that trunk to pick up things in their environment. Carolina's tail is prehensile. And since she's moving around in the treetops, that tail is gonna act like a seat belt. If she's on a tree branch and it starts to shake and wobble, she's gonna wrap her tail around it, hold on really tight, and make sure she doesn't fall out of that tree. Um, if she's sleeping, she's gonna wrap her tail around the tree branch that she's sleeping on and make sure that she doesn't fall out when she falls asleep. She also has really long nails on her hands and feet that are gonna be great for climbing as well. And so um, if you also look, her tail doesn't have any quills on the underside of it which allows it to be a little bit more grippy and it almost looks like it's covered in scales. And so that texture is gonna allow her to grip and hold on. Similar to how your thumbprint texture gives your fingers grip, this texture on her tail is gonna allow her gripping power and her tail is super, super strong. It's about half of the length of her body or you know, if her body, you measured her tip to tail, her tail takes up half of that measurement and half of its weight is muscle alone. Tons of muscle is packed in that tail. So it's super strong. It's capable of holding up her full body weight. So she can even hang just by her feet and tail. And that's gonna be super helpful when she's looking for food. Climbing around in the treetops and canopies of the South American rainforest, she's gonna be looking for leaves, flowers, fruits, nuts, roots and shoots, and cambium, which is the layer of a tree that's right underneath the bark. That's the tasty part that she's gonna be going for. And so using her really sharp rodent teeth, She's going to pull bark off the trees and then eat that cambium layer. She's going to open up really tough shelled nuts and fruits. And you can see here a little bit, 
She is kind of a messy eater. She has a biscuit right now, which is made by our nutrition department. Um, they're specially formulated biscuits for animals that are herbivores. It basically has all the vitamins and minerals that an herbivore needs. Um, but she eats it, and then when she's kind of done with it, she just drops it on the ground. So that means we pick up after her, which is cool, job security for zookeepers. But uh, in the wild when they do that, they're actually helping the, their environment because there's many, many animals that are not in the treetops. So those animals on the ground now have access to food that she just dropped. And then of course we all know what goes in must come out. So porcupines like this are important seed dispersers by eating those nuts and seeds of the fruits as they're climbing around to different trees in their environment, they are spreading those seeds and they're helping grow the next generation of the rainforest. So it's what's called interdependence. Uh, the porcupines rely on the trees because that's their home and their food source, but the trees in the forest themselves also rely on the porcupines in order for the trees to continue to grow and for there to be a healthy life cycle of the rainforests. So it just goes to show how everything is connected and every single part of the environment plays an important role in a healthy ecosystem. Now Carolina has been out here for a little bit and she's gonna hang out on our little tea perch here and continue to have her afternoon snack. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, send those in now. We'll do our best to answer them and watch Carolina be cute for a little while. Can you explain what she's eating? Yes, so right now she's eating one of those primate, or the herbivore biscuits I was talking about. And typically they're really crunchy, which is good for her because their teeth uh, are hard and they need to wear them down. So they eat lots of really tough, crunchy things. Um, but when Carolina comes out and meets people, we want her treats to be extra tasty. So we make these biscuits extra good by soaking them in grape juice. Uh, and so that little bit of added sweetness makes them more fun for her to eat, but it also means they're way more messy. And so she has all these crumbs falling down everywhere. She also is getting bananas and grapes, and then another special treat are those fruity Cheerios and Triscuits. That's another thing that she likes to eat is those Triscuits. And what do they eat in the wild? In the wild, a prehensile tailed porcupine is gonna eat things that are occurring in her environment in the treetops. So they like to eat flowers, leaves, um, the cambium layer of the trees, which is occurring right underneath the bark, and lots of roots, shoots, fresh growing plants, things like that. Why does her nose look like that? She has a really big nose, and that is because she has a very, very good sense of smell. Um, porcupines are very stinky uh, animals, and they use that for communication. Uh, they kind of scent mark themselves and the areas where they're living, and they can smell what other porcupines are. Um, but so, you know, we're gonna smell a little bit too later. It kind of wears off on us. Um, so she has a really good sense of smell to smell other porcupines. She has a good sense of smell to smell predators. Is there anything nearby that might be threatening? She has a good sense of smell to find food. And then of course, uh, a good sense of smell in order to just survive and live her best porcupine life. Now, one of my favorite things about porcupine is the word porcupine actually means spiny pig. So looking at that nose, you can probably tell why they're called that. And can you explain what kind of porcupine she is again? She is a prehensile tailed porcupine. And she gets that name from this really long tail that you see coming down and wrapping around this perch here. Um, she uses that to help her climb in her treetop habitat of the rainforest. Do they hibernate? So these porcupines do not because where they live in the tropical rainforest, the climate is pretty the same all year long. So they do not have a need to hibernate. And why is she sitting here on this stand? Oh, that is an interesting question. Well, she is trained to sit here and receive little treats um, while talking about her. We do this in our, we are in our VIP area of our um, behind the scenes uh, animal outreach building. It's called the ARC, the Animal Outreach and Conservation Center. So this is an area where sometimes guests get to come and they get behind the scenes tours. Um, unfortunately, our zoo is closed right now and everyone is hunkered down at home helping um, protect our communities by staying safe and healthy. But when the, we are fortunate enough to open back up, we have behind the scenes tours that guests can partake in. Um, all of that information is on our website at fortworthzoo.org. And uh, she is trained to be one of the animals in those tours. So she sits on this little tea perch, gets lots of snacks, and then when she's done and ready to go home, she climbs on Autumn's shoulders and Autumn carries her back to her house. 
So that's another example of how um, in control of those quills on her body she is, is we can have her sitting right on our shoulder and we're not worried about getting poked. What do they feel like? So her quills are made out of the same thing as our hair and fingernails. Obviously it's different from our hair because her quills are rigid. I actually have one of her quills over here. I can grab it so we can show it off. Let me see. So her quills are much shorter than the other porcupines. And I would say it feels similar to your fingernail. It is smooth. Um, it's a little shiny, just like a fingernail, made out of the same material called keratin. Now, if what does it feel like in terms of getting poked? Um, it does not feel good. They are sharp. And one thing that makes these porcupines different from the African species is their quills have a microscopic barb on the end. It's really tiny. You wouldn't be able to see it unless you looked at it with a microscope. But uh, it's a little barb so that when this species of porcupine quills a predator, that porcupine quill is going to get stuck. It's not going to be easily removed from that predator's skin. And that, again, that can lead to an infection. But yes, the Texas porcupines that we have here in Texas, their quills are also barbed. So if you yourself or maybe your pet has ever been unfortunate enough to uh, come in contact with a porcupine quill, you might know that for yourself. How many porcupine species are there? There are 17 different porcupine species in North and South America. Globally, I'm not 100% sure of the answer of that question. There are many. And you mentioned an infection. Do you know what that is or what would happen? It would be an infection from bacteria that is found on the quills. Like I said, they're kind of dirty. They don't take baths. Um, they scent mark themselves with their own urine. And so it would be a bacterial infection that would occur from uh, the injury sustained from the open wound of a quill poke. How do they communicate with one another? That's a good question. So like I said, scent is one of the ways they communicate. They're also kind of vocal. So maybe you can hear her sometimes. I don't know if you can hear that. She sometimes makes little squeaks and grunts, um, little happy sounds that she's getting her little treats. But if they're angry, they'll make um, hissing sounds, they'll clack their teeth, they'll rattle their quills. So they have lots of ways of communicating how they're feeling. They're kind of an open book. Are they nocturnal? They are nocturnal. They. Uh, come out at nighttime. So right now she woke up just to get these special treats and to see all of you this afternoon. And what about Thistle? Is she nocturnal? Thistle, the Cape porcupine, is also nocturnal. Uh, that species is going to want to come out at nighttime when maybe most of the other predators are not out, although uh, lions can hunt any time of day. So like I said, not many animals want to mess with a porcupine, but in order to have their best chances of avoiding a predator, nighttime is probably the best time to come out. And that's when they're going to go out looking for foods. How well can they see? So eyesight is not their strongest sense. They have okay eyesight. They can definitely see what's around them, what's in front of them, but they rely a lot on their hearing and sense of smell. And of course, their faces are covered in these cute little whiskers, and so they can feel what's around them really well as well. How do you train a porcupine? So here at the zoo, we use positive reinforcement training, which basically means when she does something we like, she gets a treat. So Thistle here, um, not Thistle, this is Carolina. We met so many porcupines today. Raise up and touch her nose to a target. And that is helpful because it allows us to like look all over her body, make sure she looks good. If the vet wants to come, you know, touch her belly, make sure she's healthy, they can do that. Um, and you do that by every time she gets her nose close to it, you give her a treat. And she's like, oh, when I got close to that thing, something good happened, I might do it again. She gets a little closer, then you give her another treat, and eventually they learn, oh, how I earn this thing I want is by touching that target. How old is Carolina? Carolina is nine years old. Are they social animals? So, depending on the type of porcupine, these porcupines that are found in South America, the prehensile tail porcupine, they are not typically social. Males and females come together seasonally, and then you might see a mom and her baby together, but other than that, they're typically by themselves. Uh, African Cape porcupines will live in little family groups, and in fact, they'll build pretty extensive tunnel and burrow systems so they can all live together underground, hanging out where it's safe. Do they like to swim? Some porcupines can swim. I wouldn't necessarily say they enjoy it though. It's kind of something that you just have to do sometimes in the wild. And can you explain her nose again? 
Uh, she does have a very big nose and it's really good for smelling. So uh, she uses that as one of her primary senses to explore her environment. Uh, she's got really big whiskers as well to do that. And she's gonna be smelling for predators, for friend or foe, for food. And then like I said earlier, a cool fact is the word porcupine means spiny pig. She's got a little pig nose. Are there porcupines in North Texas? There are porcupines in North Texas. We are fortunate enough to have a porcupine species in our own treetops. It is the uh, North American porcupine. They're not commonly sighted. You don't see them too often, but they have been seen in a couple different state parks in the area. And would they come after our pets? They are not aggressive. So if there's ever a conflict, they're not typically the ones aggressing that conflict. It's usually almost always our pets being curious and, oh, what's this thing I'm smelling? What's this new animal approaching it? And then the porcupine's just defending itself. You know, it doesn't know a dog wants to be its friend. <laughs> and so it'll uh, defend itself the best way it can by threat displaying, flaring out those quills. And then if it has to, it will use them, so. And how big is Carolina and how big is Thistle? So Thistle, the porcupine that was in here earlier, she weighs about 30 pounds, which is typical for the species. And she weighs about 10. So a little bit of a difference there. And this type of porcupine can weigh anywhere between like four to 12 pounds. So kind of a big range. Will uh, Carolina here get any bigger? She is full grown, as is Thistle. Both of these porcupines are um, done in their growing in terms of you know size and length we can all get a little bit bigger around the middle as we get older but how old do they get uh, in human care Carolina could live as much as 15 years and what do they eat in the wild they eat lots of plants as herbivores she's gonna be moving through her treetop habitat looking for flowers leaves fruits and seeds as well as tree, uh, tree cambium, which is right underneath that bark. It's the super soft layer of the tree that must taste pretty good to porcupines and other rodents because beavers like it too. And last question, are these guys endangered? They are not endangered. So we're very fortunate that these porcupines are considered its least concern, which means they're not threatened, they're not endangered. They happen to be doing really, really well in their habitat. Now, um, habitat destruction could eventually lead to them becoming endangered, but as of right now, they are thriving in the wild. All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Autumn, for bringing Carolina out here. Now, before we go, we have a fun activity that we hope you can do together with your families in your home, and it is Talk About Tales. So we saw two porcupines today that have some similarities and differences, and one of the big things is their tail. Our first, first porcupine that we met, her tail was short and she rattles it and uses it for self-defense. So the rattle is an auditory threat and then it's covered in quills that she will use to poke a predator with. And Carolina's tail doesn't really have many quills on it because she uses it for climbing and to navigate her habitat. And so what we want you guys to do is to look out in your, around your house, in your neighborhood or in your backyards and see what kind of tails the animals around your area have. Maybe even if you look in any animal books you have, look at animals' tails, do some research, and see if you can figure out what those tails are for. Maybe it's to help them fly, maybe it's for balance, maybe it's to help them climb, like Carolina here. Um, and then get back to us, tell us what you found out, and hopefully we learned some cool stuff. All right, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I hope you guys learned a lot. I think Carolina's ready to head home and uh, she's just finishing her snack. So uh, thank you for joining us for our Facebook Live and have a great rest of your afternoon.